comment. Um, Frank Dodd Act. A um, couple key things. HVCC, Home Valuation Code of Conduct. So, remember the appraiser that wanted to get those 12 deals from the builder and the builder said, you better come in at my price or you're not going to get those appraisals? All right. That went away. Appraisers said, we're being unfairly influenced. And so, the government heard that and they came out with Home Valuation Code of Conduct where there was a protocol where there became a separation from the loan officer and the builder picking who was the appraiser. So, I can't pick an appraiser. You can't pick an appraiser. So now they have approved appraisers. They have pools. They created something called AMCs, appraisal management companies. If you, if you think you're mad, go have a beer with an appraiser and ask them about AMCs, appraisal management companies. Because these companies were formed and then they would divvy out appraisals. So in other words, the lender would say, has to be at random, so the order comes into this company and then the, uh, the appraisal management company would divvy out the appraisal. And when they did, they say, you want this appraisal? The market's pretty bad. I tell you what, will you do it for 70 cents on the dollar? Will you do it for 60 cents on the dollar? So these appraisers were getting um, a haircut on their price and their volume, their business overall was down. Home valuation code of conduct, appraisers, and by the way, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying the appraisal management companies were, were certainly part of the problem. And in theory, they were part of the solution, but they, they did some other things. All right. All right. I heard a story out of Florida where um, an appraiser was, um, I guess, de-licensed. He had done fraudulent activity, not fraud, but somehow he lost his appraisal license in Florida. And the next day he opened an AMC. <laughs> and there no regulations, at least there weren't any regulations for the AMC. In Washington now, there are some guardrails for the AMCs. And so this thing has now turned into um, actually AIR, Appraisal Independence Review, actually turned into AIR. Uh, I love these acronyms. Um, hilarious but but anyway so there's been some morphing of this whole appraisal thing but but one of the premises of this of this act was all about uh, that appraisal thing all right so by the way in theory the idea was that we were getting better quality appraisals because and, and more real appraisals because there was less duress in the market okay the next thing that happened with Frank Dodd was loan origination fees so it used to be, oh, this is an FHA loan. I can make this much money as a lender. I can make this much money on this conventional loan. On this arm, I make this much money. On this subprime, I make a lot more money. So what was happening was that either the loan originator or the mortgage company or a combination, their fee income, their income, their commission was predicated upon the type of loan. And so suddenly you had steering going on where the lenders, where the buyers were being told, I really think this is a good loan program. Well, what about this one? Oh, that's okay too. If you want, it, I'll give it to you. But I think this is the one that you want. Cha-ching. That's the, that was going on. So Frank Dodd came out and said, nada, not anymore, anymore. You get paid based on the loan amount, regardless of the type of loan. You get an FHA loan, you get a VA loan, you get a rural housing, you get, you get a, a, an arm, you get a, whatever type of loan you get, um, then uh, the loan officer gets paid the same on that loan. And that's where we are today. And that's pretty cool with one little caveat. Dirk likes to do first-time home buyers. He likes to work with the first-time home buyer. Dave Porter likes to work on energy efficient loans, adding energy improvements. First-time home buyers too. And the problem is those take a little bit more work and we're gonna get paid the same. 
So we're going to put in the extra effort, we're going to put in the extra time, and that's fine because that's what we signed up for, but what happened is that there wasn't an accounting for that, for that factor, the harder loans. So what are you going to find? You're going to find lenders saying, I just want the easy stuff because I'm just a turn and burn. I got to get to the next loan. I don't want to take the time, you know? Uh, you have a $40,000 mobile home, you know? Uh, I'll get back to you, you know, you know, well, you never called me back. Well, yeah, sorry, I tried and I, my cell phone, you know, yeah. and the predatory lending, you know, um, this is where, um, uh, frankly, uh, a lot of African Americans um, were abused, where they, there are actual studies done where these people could qualify for a regular loan and they were dumped into a subprime loan at higher interest rates and higher fees by the lenders, and they could have qualified. Yeah, and it happened to all people, but there were a couple studies that showed that there was a lot of abuse, and that's why they kind of came out with the predatory lending thing, saying that can the buyer qualify? Is the buyer's best interest in mind? Does this loan benefit the borrower? And then this this crazy, crazy question: Can they? Is, is there a reasonable intent that they can repay the loan? Oh, come on. They would ask us to see if the buyer could qualify in a reasonable intent to repay the loan. Those silly feds. That's <laughs> so stupid. If it was just done with any sort of credibility in the first place, we would have been there. We would have been there. There was clear abuse. There was steering of loans. They had to make the change. 